So thanks a lot, uh, Philip, uh, for the nice introduction and also a warm welcome from my side. Um, and we'll have now as a last uh, agenda point the panel uh, of today. So therefore, I would like um, that the uh, participants of the panel uh, please come uh, to the front and we'll organize the seats as well. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, and the microphone. So as far as I've understood from, from Philip, it sounds like um, uh, the data Amazon, so really something which every company should have. Um, so my first question would be, um, from your perspective, what would be really the benefits when you think about data mesh and, and should every company have it at least? Um, and Diana, if you would like to start on one hand to introduce yourself and then um, to give a quick insight um, from your perspective. Sure. Hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Jana Jankovic Jasic. I'm coming from Erste Bank and responsible for the BAC Austria. So uh, if your question is whether we should, uh, and every company should have really a data mesh, I would say for the specific uh, use case, for sure, yes. Um, uh, we all here operate in a highly regulated environment, you know, and this, of course, brings a lot of obstacles in the in the day to day business. But uh, when it comes to the specific use cases, which are uh, related to our customers, which are related to the data products, which are related to the uh, further improvement, and especially when it which are related to the uh, real time data, then I would say that data mesh as such is um, unavoidable. And uh, this brings uh, multiple benefits in these regards, but it's also uh, unfortunately not the unique uh, solution. Somebody mentioned, I think, Philip in his presentation, like uh, monolithic beasts as the current data warehouse. House, you know, on on one hand, I would agree with that one. You know, it's not uh, easy to build a data warehouse. On the other hand, it's also a question: How does this work uh, currently in the current environment in which we are uh, working with so many regulations? I said. Thanks a lot. Um, so, Felix, maybe your point of view on that. So it should work already. Okay, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Felix Glem. I'm a managing director at Accenture a part of the leadership of uh, data and applied intelligence. And uh, actually, um, in my individual role, I'm I'm coaching clients with, with Data Mesh since a few years now. And actually, if you ask me um, uh, about uh, benefits of Data Mesh and should everybody have a Data Mesh, uh, we will see, actually. But uh, actually, what we see in the market is really that um, um, data mesh is perceived as, as a game changer. Yeah, we have been talking since many years now about uh, data-led transformation, uh, meaning how to be, become truly digital. And actually, so a few years ago, we did a survey with our clients asking them, what do you think, how far, how mature you are on your way to data-led transformation? And uh, we found out that many struggle with the fundamentals, Yeah, with data integration with data governance so the very basic fundamentals yeah and uh, uh, data mesh is now saying um, actually i mean you don't need to achieve this this big monolith this big standardized harmonized data landscape yeah it's okay where you are yeah you can have data uh, lakes you can have, can have data warehouses yeah so stay where you are you, we accept alert a certain distribution in your data landscape uh, start where you are start small you have now an iterative approach on how to um, on how to achieve more agility more technical uh, capabilities like uh, real time data for example yeah you can add that to your existing portfolio and really scale that up, really starting small with uh, uh, enabling all the cool data assets you have in your company, uh, expose them and have some kind of uh, democratization that everybody can use the data. And it's really, uh, if you do it right, it will be holistic and really comfortable for your, um, for your consumers. Thanks a lot. Um, so maybe Alexander, next question to you. Um, 
what actually challenges or obstacles are you seeing when you think about data mesh implementation into a pro into an organization? Um, what are the, the the standard lessons learned in a certain sense that uh, that you can uh, transfer to the audience? Alexander Pitzman, <clears throat> Onika Insurance Group. So, um, in the group data management, we have 18 countries, 20,000 employees to be covered, uh, 50 million customers, a lot of data, 100 years in the field. And you can tell a lot of technologies out there. Um, as Felix described, uh, we have to start where we are. So, and this is the best obstacle. <laughs> we have to start where we are. We cannot start greenfield. We have legacy, we have a lot of legacy. And <clears throat> if you try to harmonize things, standardize things, that's a good approach, that's important. If you are uh, putting things together, but even in the same time, there are emerging new things, new technologies, new hype topics. And if everything is under control or you think you have everything under control, then you're buying another company like we did with AXA, for example. <laughs> So you have, again, the whole integration stuff and so on. So is it possible to get into this basic idea of a single platform solution? No. That's a simple answer. So, and this is the starting point. Um, but on the other hand, we were sold in the last years, let's tell it last five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, that's the next solution. You have to take this solution and integrate everything into there and then it will work out. Was it the data warehouses? Was it the enterprise data model? Was it uh, the data lakes? Was it whatever you name it? So, and what I think personally is the data mesh is the first very realistic approach here to say, no, the world is distributed. It's, it's not all the same. You cannot harmonize everything. But what you can do, and thanks, Philip, uh, you brought it uh, perfectly to us, you can focus on domains, on user domains. And that's the second obstacle. It's, it's the people. We will not bring everybody to the same table. But we can bring certain persons with similar problems and similar thinkings, so usage patterns, for example, to different tables. These are the domains. And the third obstacle is here. How can you make people using the things? You have two things uh, uh, or, or two kind of parties uh, which are very crucial in a data mesh. You have the data consumers and the producers. So at Unica, we put another analogy like um, an app store. And we called it not a data catalog, we called it the data product store. So we need to bring data products into the store and we need data consumers to be interested to find their data, what they need for their daily work in this data product store. And we have a very similar problem. How can we find people? How can we attract people to go there to bring their data products there? And how can we attract people to try to find the data they need there? And not to ask, I don't know, in the cafeteria or so. Go there, search it. How did, was, was the Google store, the, the, the Apple App Store and so on? Where does success come from? It comes from the people. Um, if we manage to be attractive to the people, to bring in their data products and to search for data in there, then we will be successful. That's our, our main finding here. And if the vendors come up with uh, suitable solutions, we will be happy because currently we did not find one. We are at the second RFP now for data cataloging with the same questions like two years ago. But to be honest, I'm not so hopeful that we will find the perfect solution this time. Okay, so I know a good consulting company who can for sure guide you through the path. Uh, but um, maybe coming to Georg, um, I've understood so far, if you think about people, process, technology, uh, it's more related to the people compared to technology. So would you agree on that? Yes. Uh, hello, my name is Georg Kildofer, Head of uh, Enterprise Data Analytics Platform at uh, RBI. And yes, for sure, it is a, is a, a people a topic. Yeah. So um, I would say a lesson learned that we had so far in, in our journey is uh, the involvement of, I would say, both sides. You need IT you need the, and also the business people. You need to make sure that everybody has the, the right skills. Uh, very funny, we did a, a skills assessment the last week. And uh, 
guess what the the I would say biggest gap was that our colleagues said that they have. Yeah, um, the the IT guys said the biggest gap besides yeah I don't know reinforcement learning or whatever. Uh, the biggest gap was uh, knowledge about uh, a business. Yeah, knowledge about the content of the data. Yeah, what what is it aiming for? Why do we have it? Yeah, and uh, if we ask on the other side on 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 the business colleagues, here always the topic comes up with having the the right skills. Yeah, knowing uh, SQL, knowing uh, uh, being data literate enough, yeah, understanding also here from a technical point of view what, what asset we have in the data. And here I think uh, data mesh is an extremely good enabler because it says start small, start in a, a cross-functional team, try to uh, or define the first data products, make sure that you have it properly documented, yeah, make sure that it's uh, usable, make sure that you have a consumer for your data product. And uh, I must say here really data mesh is, yeah, a good way, it's a good start yeah, and a good enabler here to create this, this common data literacy and also to get the, 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 the value out of the data because, yeah, in most of the cases, also like with us, also like with other companies, people don't uh, get this, this value out there. So, um, Diana, um, I mean, we already talked about data mesh upfront today um, and I've understood... Um, it's not like that we're having some kind of new technology, new kind of governance, and then we're just applying it um, at the corresponding um, organization, but we have to think about how to really uh, drive the way forward. Um, so if you can give us maybe some insights how, how your journey uh, started and where it is currently. Well, you know, I would come back to this, what Alex just said, you know, first thing is to uh, really move the people from cafeteria thinking, you know, and getting the information about the data from cafeteria to data catalog, you know, this is, but in general, when speaking about the, the data mesh as such and uh, move, moving towards this, uh, this journey, I would say, you know, it's, it's 2022. And uh, I think that uh, a lot of organizations, uh, maybe even coming back to the pre presentation previous, are not aware of the skills which they have of the people within, within the organization. Um, I would just uh, uh, give you a plain uh, example, you know, in um, our division of around 50 people, where I'm working as well, uh, I would say that 49 do not, do not have SQL skills. I mean, it's not like that all over the organization, uh, but uh, it is a lot, you know, because people really uh, went up a lot with, with their, their skills, you know, only I would say that uh, the assistant maybe doesn't have the SQL skills, all the rest do. And, uh, but the, the question in terms of uh, further uh, going uh, towards the data mesh and using data mesh for certain purposes also implies a lot of working on the data culture. A lot of working on this. This is not important only for data mesh. This is important for also for these big monolithical beasts, you know, in term uh, called the data warehouses. You know, how, however you look at the at this uh, point of view, you know, I would say that uh, the uh, skills and the support from the colleagues from HR in this regard, you know, would help a lot. Doesn't matter data mesh or monolithical data warehouse. Still, you know, this is the the, the, the key. Thanks a lot. Um, so, Alex, um, let, let's assume um, a, a new organization is knocking on your door. So, what would be your recommendation about data mesh, the first steps, um, how they should tackle it? Starting <coughs> towards the data mesh is, is starting where you are, starting very small, what Felix said. Um, how can you start uh, to get the things going? You have to simply to pick out the ones who want to start with you because it is about people. So you have to select maybe among some use cases, several use cases, let's call them free, free use cases, uh, where I think those people are interested, they are inspired, um, they have some kind of spirit on that and they want to try something new. And those are the ones who can kind of offer data. And if you're lucky, you find three others which need their data. <laughs> and that's basically the problem. You, you start not with 300 data products and with 20,000 people requiring data. You need some small and start small and then telling the story, improving, telling the story, um, going this lighthouse approach. You know, that's basically important because then it starts to be interesting. Others start, okay, how did you do that? Okay, how did you reuse the data? 
oh, you're just using an API call and you can access the data. No, it did not take you six months. You got the data within six days and it can be even faster. Telling these stories, that's important here. Again, it's about people and people. We, we tend to say you have few people in the organization who want to try out new things. You have only few people who never want to try out new things. And the big, uh, the big in the middle, they make the difference and you can only attract them with the stories. Create stories. That's how to get started. Sounds great, yeah. So, Felix, um, when we're thinking about the market, um, we've understood from Philip that um, the concept was um, created 2019, so three years back, uh, not not quite long. Um, so, how would you see the the current Dach market uh, where it is currently? Um, are we in a in a starting position, or are we already on the journey? Um, if you can comment on that, yeah, we have uh, different levels of uh, maturity there. Yeah, we see that. Um, Really, it's a hot topic in the market. Many clients approaching us, yeah, so we don't need to go and tell about data mesh. People ask us how to how to really do it, yeah. And so we have really big companies um, asking for help in that. And we have different maturity levels. Uh, we have many companies who are in the first steps, defining the first um, uh, use cases, uh, doing the decomposition of data products and all that, yeah. But also, especially in in uh, certain industries like life science, we already see uh, bigger installations in production. Yeah, but there's no company which has more than 20 or, or 30 data products really live. So it's really in an early, early stage. Yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, uh, this is really true what Philip said. Yeah. So uh, even on on the inventors uh, page on the tech radar of Fordworks. Um, uh, data mesh is marked as trial. Yeah? You can try it out, you should try it, but don't expect that much support from vendors, for example. Yeah? Uh, we talked about data catalog. Uh, my, my colleague Wolfgang was uh, visiting one of the big uh, catalog vendors and telling them how to use their product for registering um, data uh, products. Yeah, because they didn't know actually. So this, these are the solutions we currently find uh, in, in, in practice. And actually, if you wait a few years, there will be kind of a, a competition between the vendors who has the best approach to tackle it. Yeah, we see uh, companies like, uh, uh, like Data Breaks or, or Snowflake adjusting their products to fit with this idea of, of data mesh. And a lot of these questions will be solved then. And it will be a lot easier to get into this, but it doesn't mean to wait years, yeah, because then the competitive advantage will be gone, yeah. So take the chance to start early, I would say. Thanks a lot. So Georg, when you when you hear all that, uh, I have the impression that Austria is one step ahead. Uh, so we have here many people already knowing data mesh concept and are already tried it or applying it. Um, so how would you see that? Is this uh, because of the um, of, of Austria in general, the innovation part, or just luck? Um, what is your, your feeling? Good question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say um, uh, data mesh, yeah, because uh, we have a lot of international companies, the headquarters here, and uh, I think we all uh, experienced a lot with our monolithic uh, data warehouses and uh, had here, uh, I would say, a lot of pain. And uh, I think, um, yeah, having here this, this scene and having here this, this knowledge and the past and also having here, I would say, quite quite good skills on the market, uh, um, we are a good starting point with, with data mesh. Yeah? Thanks a lot. So Alex, when, you, when, you, when we are two or three years ahead, um, so where would you see your organization and also the market? Um, are we on the same stage? Are we one foot ahead or where where are we actually i think what in in terms of data mesh uh we are a little bit ahead i was in in, in london at, at the big summit uh, um, two weeks ago or something and uh, what i was recognizing there is that uh, however you call it data fabric data mesh however you want to name it this approach started to emerge and um it is a solution for companies yeah for companies like we have the situation here in austria especially but also for a lot of other companies with that legacy topic and they have the chance 
uh, to do one step over it, over over the the, um, the current situation. So we perceive ourselves to be one step behind, or we perceived ourselves as being one step behind, but that's simply not true. Uh, we have the chance now to overcome that, like we have we had with the fixed lines phones, you know, and then the mobile phones came, and in some countries the fixed lines was. The infrastructure was a disaster, and they totally stepped over it and overcome it with this uh, mobile phone uh, infrastructure. And I have the same fe feeling for us here in Austria. It's a big chance for us. Simply do do not the same failures like others did in in this field, like in the recent years, especially in the last let's say three, four, five years, um, and uh, step over that and using this investment into this small and democratic starting process just by giving the platform and yeah we will have the same problem here um, if you consider apple there was nobody giving them an, a, a platform for an app store they had to develop it for themselves luckily there are kind of platforms today which we can use to make something like a data product store that's what we're doing but it would have been easier if we could have bought one so and that's where we will be in three years i think uh, then we will throw away what we try to make now instead of buy it <laughs> and can buy one because we are an insurance company and not a development company for data product stores so the other question to you um, in three years um, will Erste Bank have also an app store related to data <laughs> uh, I would say yes and for sure yes um, but you know before thinking about you know like uh, how we would handle this I would still tackle uh, you know some of the topics related to it and first uh, I remember what uh, Georg was saying during his presentation uh, you know um, artificial intelligence is uh, is not a magic bullet and uh, also data mesh is not is not a magic bullet you know before we start going into this direction before we really go into this direction uh, we have to think uh, thoroughly about about uh, what are exactly the cases where we would apply. And we have to think about the governance because uh, definitely it is possible uh, to use data mesh for many circumstances, for many uh, use cases, for many topics, but it is still the question of, you know, create potentially creating new silos. Is this going, if the governance is not proper, is this maybe going to create some new silos within the given domains? How would this work? How would this work from the point of view of um, escalations? How would this work from the point of view of the data duplicities between the, the data domains? So there are multiple questions which are open in this regard, but still uh, for a lot of topics which are related really to the to the uh, customer centric view to the product view i would say that uh, data mesh is not not something which can be avoided and shouldn't be avoided in the end you know thanks a lot so um, the title of the panel is um, the answer to scaled actionable insights and i would like to do a quick round so felix if you would start so maybe one or two sentences is this a yes or no uh, regarding to the question yeah, it depends. <laughs> um, can I say more than one? Okay. I mean, actually, it it highly depends how uh, this product thinking is established in your organization. Yeah, and it's not enough to build the mesh and the cool infrastructure and the data catalog, and then it's running. Yeah, you need uh, to work on the use cases which really differentiate yeah? and make a, a change in the market in your organization. And this is an ongoing journey. It's not something mesh is just the foundation you need to work on this product thinking then yes if you establish that yes definitely so maybe alex your point of view mesh is a key concept um, and but it's dead without the people so you need constantly get the interest of the people the attraction to the people from both sides from the data producers and the consumers and yes, the platform, the the technology you need is simply the technology you need to provide them a platform where to work. But it's about the people. You have to attract the people, then it will scale. Mm -hmm. Diana, is it a silver bullet or? No, no, absolutely not. As I said, you know, it's it's not a silver bullet. It's not uh, the you know the 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 magic solution for all the problems and everything what we have. But definitely also a step forward. So. If you ask me, yes, maybe, but for very carefully thought uh, uh, 
issues where you would apply. That's it. This would be my answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say yes. Yeah, having uh, worked uh, a lot of time in traditional data warehouse uh, environments, yeah, so I would say definitely enough, uh, is, enough. enough is enough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, and I think it's important that this topic overcomes this first hype. And uh, if it, uh, I would say, overcomes this first hype, will depend on if it can be, I would say, properly monetized. Uh, if there's a proper business case behind, if uh, you have uh, still after two, three years, the people who support it, if there's still a, I would say, pulling effect, and this also comes with, uh, I would say, uh, the people, and also it comes with the platforms and technology behind them. So maybe coming to the QA's um, session, um, and I'm having it uh, the the. Several different questions. Um, so maybe it's starting with the first one. Um, is there still a data warehouse or lake behind the data mesh? If why, if yes, why isn't it still cumbersome? If no, what if I need uh, to connect data from different domains? Um, so any volunteer who wants to answer that question? Both. There will be not one, there will be several data warehouses and several data lakes and uh, multi-cloud usage and everything which is upcoming in, in, in the next years. Uh, and that's the basic problem here. Data mesh can help to overcome this big zoo of technologies and uh, of, of different approaches and different silos. Uh, but uh, the problem is not to create new ones. So it is also the problem of connecting data products. If you think of one data product, taking data from another data product, taking data from another pro data product, taking data from another data product, then you have the typical lineage problem, or simply I call it data flow. And if your data mesh is automatically using this API approach that you gather the information from your data products, the metadata, let's say all over and over again, then you can automatically also generate which data product uses data from which data product. And then you will see the mesh. That's the visual <laughs> approach will be maybe a small one in the beginning and later uh, a very, very big data mesh. And yeah, it's not to say we can stop all data warehouse topics because of reconciliation, for example. There are domains where you really need harmonized data models and data warehouses, especially in risk, in, in compliance topics, in finance topics. You need them because it's not very easy to make the reconciliation among different data products. But there are a lot of uh, advantages in the data products where you have multiple data warehouses, multiple lakes, multiple sources. So both come together then. So next question is, um, how much does it take for a bank uh, to go for data mesh? <laughs> um, Georg, if you want to take it. Yeah, <laughs> how much? Uh, in <laughs> I would in <laughs> effort, yeah, whatever. Uh, I would say um, there are three main components. Yeah, it's the one hand uh, that oh, the first component is that you have the proper technical setup in place, meaning uh, proper tooling, proper platform. Uh, a proper setup. It's also like uh, you, you mentioned it before, we are a bank, we are not self-developing now a data catalog, we are not self-developing an, an, an app store for data. It is uh, unrealistic. So it's important for us to choose here the right uh, platform. So to have here the, I would say, right underlying uh, basis. Yeah. Um, the second topic is um, people and skills. And this is also tough investment, I must say. For example, we are running a data science academy to skill up uh, um, RBI here on a large level. Also, we say data without analytics is nothing. So you need to combine both. Otherwise, you will not get the value out of it. And also this, I would say, principle needs to be taught and uh, uh, literated uh, through the through the group. Yeah. And the, the third big topic is then also finding um, the, the right business case and the, the value behind uh, the, the data and the data products. Yeah. Because if it can't be properly monetized, yeah, then this whole investment, yeah, you don't get the right return. So I would say these three components are yeah, critical success fa factors and it takes it that we can make it. Yeah. <laughs> 
So Felix, maybe one question um, to you. So how close are you working with Microsoft Asia product services? And maybe to, to make it more broader, when you think about products or vendors overall, so what is your point of view? What would you would you guide an organization? What What is the way forward with respect to technology? I mean, as said, uh, so the mesh idea is not a technology-driven idea. But I would say if you really want to if uh, achieve uh, results fast, Uh, you need to go for cloud. Yeah, I mean, actually, uh, I have some when uh, clients trying to do it on prem, but actually, it's 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 double the effort and uh, uh, less outcome. And then, I mean, there's too much competition uh, to uh, traditional concepts. Then, yeah, and um, the benefits might might not be that that big. Yeah, so it's natural to talk about to talk with the cloud providers. And uh, actually, yeah, there are really really interesting. Uh, concepts developed, yeah, especially in terms of uh, when, when it comes to data catalog and uh, data marketplace, and all, also the the access concepts. Yeah, so many uh, cloud providers are working on on really interesting services, making that much easier. Uh, you you need to imagine that each and every data product has its own uh, roles and uh, and dependencies and 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 access constraints yeah and it's much easier to to have a cloud cloud based uh, scripted policy around that than to use some kind of a, a cataloging tool which is super heavy yeah so um this is where we are in close connection also to work to arrange or to compose uh, these data mesh architectures out of services yeah and i mean actually um uh, you will see a different world next year i would say yeah thanks so let's having another question maybe from the audience. Is there someone who wants to ask our experts something with respect to data mesh? Um, or is everything clear? <laughs> it's always funny. <laughs> okay, if not, then uh, let's close the session. So thanks a lot uh, for being here today. And I wish you still a nice day.